compelling experience that, um, that it uses a few points on the finger with tracking, a virtual elastic band that you can play with in a 3D space. The way you move and the more dramatic your movements get, the more the music, you know, brings passion. So it really, it, 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 it's both music and, and augmented reality and just a lot of fun. You see how he's working within a 3D space, meaning that his hands can move in any direction and obviously utilize both the X, the Y, and the Z axis for the experience. It's extremely responsive. Very responsive, and his hands can even occlude one another, and then we really understand their experience. Wow. So it would be able to differentiate between if one hand is behind another, too? Wow. It doesn't lose track. So is, there, is it using the same type of camera as like an RGB and... Nope. It's using a specialized camera that's built into this all-in-one. Here, you can look it's, over it's there. It's called a depth camera. There's a, now that's another version of, of a depth camera, but each of all the cameras we use give us depth data. So a typical RGB camera is not giving you the depth information in the field. It's simply giving you the color information. Mm -hmm. And that's not sufficient for our solution. That we don't believe that gives you robust enough experiences like what we're going to show you now. Okay. So the next, uh, the next demonstration is what I talked about before, that's Windows 8, that's really enabling a touch interface, which for devices that don't have touch, and giving you a, a touch, I will say, a touch plus experience. Huh. Wow. So you see how he's able to, to go into the travel function and maneuver a panoramic picture. Again, he uses a space between the PC and him, not just in a two-dimensional plane, but in a very natural three-dimensional plane. He has all sorts of different types of movements, which, which are very intuitive to him to control the to control the, uh, the visual effect. It appears to be natural too. It almost seems like an extension of two D gesturing. And that's the idea here. We'll go beyond that in a minute. But and if he goes into an application like Fruit Ninja, which of course everyone loves to do Fruit Ninja, but what we really like to demonstrate inside Fruit Ninja is the fact that this, this really also differentiates us. You see how his hand is almost in the same place, mm -hmm. and he points. He's not moving all over in an awkward position. He's not making his hand do the work. He's simply pointing with his finger, and it's very responsive and very to his movements. And if he goes and puts five fingers up, for example, all of a sudden, bam, you've got your cheating version of the... <laughs> he can even put ten fingers up. I mean, it doesn't... You know, and there you have it. He can... He scores it's the so highest points that way. It's extremely impressive. So now going... Uh, there's a painting application. Um, I mean, we can basically do anything inside of Windows. We're not limited. But if you would paint, for example, as his finger gets closer, it's almost like pressure. His finger gets closer, and the depth gets what you know gets a wider. And then as he goes further back, it's a finer point. So you're able to again manipulate, um, really utilize the three-dimensional plane to give a different experience. Now, this is all the Windows 8 stuff. The next thing we're going to show you is. When you think about an experience beyond Windows 8, you know, really think about 3D, not just taking and, and enabling um, um, a 2D screen to have 3D, but what happens when you want to interface with your content in a different way? So the first thing I'll point out here is, you know, in what you saw in Windows 8 is you see a very uh, grid-like features, right? Mm -hmm. and, but your hand doesn't move in a grid. If you, the way Ellie rests his elbow there and he puts his hand on home, his, his arm goes into an arc motion. So first of all, you want your... You want it to be a natural complement of the human movements. Mm. So now he goes into an application. He goes to his books. He's got a library of books in front of him. He can bring it closer to him. He can push it further away. He can scroll through his books. And then he can pick a book and say, oh, I'm curious to see. Let me, what do you do when you see a book? You look at the back. He turns it around and he says, okay, this looks like a good book. I think I'll read it. He puts his other hand and bam, he's inside his book. That's impressive. He oh. goes and he flips his pages, he reads his book, and when he's done his book, he puts his hands together, simply closes it, puts it back on the shelf. And he decides after he's typing away on Windows 8, and he says, oh, you know, I need, I wanna, I wanna put a nice backdrop, and he can scroll through his pictures, and again, he can look on the back of the picture, or he can pull it close to him, and it becomes, if he pulls it close, then it becomes the screen. And if he simply naturally puts it back, then he's back into his pictures. And likewise, he can go and scroll his music collection. Again, you're typing in uh, an email, and you say, oh, I didn't want to put some music on. So you could simply lift up your hands, flip to your music, look at it. Yeah, that's the album I want, or no, it's not. Pull your other hands, pinch it, and bam. 
hearing your music. So you can imagine if you're shopping also, right? If you're shopping online and you want to see um, an, an experience I've talked about is you look at a shoe, but the shoe only has three pictures. But what if you want to really look at it? You have to pick it up and you have to turn it around and you want to expand it. So we're giving people the ability to interact with the con their content in a, to a totally different paradigm. Um, so the next video is now a little bit more precise. It's a 3D modeling um, application that we've built. It's very much under uh, development right now, so we're showing it for the first time. This is a piece of clay, and Ali says, first of all, he designed it right now to be symmetrical, and he wants to, I don't know what he's about to show us. Let's pull it now, so we disable the symmetrical. Oh, he Just pull it out. <laughs> he has all sorts of, he can pinch, he can pull, he can model his clay in all sorts of different ways. He can turn it around. And so now he just made it symmetrical again. So that if he gets an ear on one side. That's so funny. And I'll get an ear on two sides. <laughs> <laughs> and of course he can he has all sorts of different features. So is this is current use, uh, currently using one source. A one camera shooting at you, or right. using just one? Yeah, Where is it located? The camera is located right there. at the base of okay. the other one. Wow. And so, um, and that the last application we'll show you is just a, we, we build a set of tools around our SDK to give developers to really quickly put up demos. So Ellie wanted to test how good his tools was. So he said, okay, I'm going to build a quick marionette. And this took him just a matter of two, three days. And he put together a wonderful, fun, marionette demo. So you see his middle finger is his head, his outer fingers are his legs, and the two in internal fingers are the arms, and he controls the puppet. He puts a second hand up and So this is really just the ideas of how to have fun, how to have practical use cases, all together. Uh, has Omek considered uh, looking at uh, medical use cases? That's, been, that's it, by the way, if you want to show your camera. I mean, we have other stuff, but that's all we're